Welcome to the Love Holistic Living Podcast, your roadmap to heal and align mind, body, and soul and become intuitive through food, pleasure, and spirituality with your host and Italian friend, Sara Garofalo. Hello, and welcome back to another episode with your Italian friend, life coach, and spiritual healer, Sara Garofalo with Love Holistic Living. Today, I'm here with Jenna Meden. She is a high performance conscious leadership coach and business strategy for awakened female entrepreneur scaling to six and seven figures. So welcome to the show, Jenna. Thanks, Sarah. I'm so happy to be here with you all today. Awesome. We're so excited for this conversation. And uh, we are going to let the audience know that today is about talking about the holistic CEO. Yes. Yeah. There's so much, there's so much we can talk about. I know on this t- subject and I'm excited for us to dive in. Awesome. Me too. Honestly, um, you know, as my business is called love holistic living, it was because I started with this love for holistic living. So bringing balance into the the whole world of my, my world, you know, mind, body, and soul. And I've done a lot of work around my business, which is obviously, you know, the mirror of, yes. of yourself, of your soul. Honestly, it's like such a hard lesson sometimes. But tell us about you and your story and how you got to find that place of balance. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I feel like I'm I'm on the right place having this conversation with you because it really was my own inner journey, especially on the holistic side of things that took every, it was the catalyst for everything, including growing my business. So if we kind of jump back to what feels like the origin of this whole holistic journey, including the business was about eight years ago is when I quit my corporate job where I had been in a leadership and management position for a number of years. But if I'm being honest, it was kind of sucking my soul. It wasn't super aligned. And it it really, for me, felt like I didn't have a purpose. And that's what sparked everything because I started my own personal development, personal healing kind of journey, which started with the physical, as I feel like it often does when I went on a big health and weight loss journey. And that led to me understanding a little bit more about holistic living in general. And also it gave me the extra step, the extra courage I felt like I needed to make a lot of changes in my life. Everything from leaving a toxic relationship that ended in a restraining order to quitting my corporate job to starting my business, which initially was life coaching and personal fitness training for women and evolved into what it is today, which is more about leadership and business strategy. So it's been truly a journey. Oh my God, that's been a journey. It's <laughs> yeah. somewhat similar to mine, but yet I know it's unique to you and it's a lot to deal with when you exit that toxic relationship. You know, it's so much mm-hmm. stress to the body. But for the audience, you said like I wasn't aligned in corporate, right? And for people who might not be familiar with the terms alignment, I use it a lot, but what what did that feel to you when you were out of alignment? Yeah, if the best way I can describe it is it felt heavy. It felt like when I got up in the morning and I was getting ready for work and my alarm was going off, I felt I wouldn't say depressed or even anxious necessarily, but it felt like I wasn't lit up. I didn't really feel excited to go to work. It felt like I was just trading time for money and I didn't really know what else was out there for me. I had never even considered entrepreneurship, but I just kept having this niggling feeling like there's something else, there's something more, there's something better that's out there for me. And it just kept getting stronger and stronger and stronger. And the more I started to learn about the mind, body, soul, connection the holistic side of things the louder that voice got for me Mm -hmm. and how loud like if you can explain to the audience like hey this is this was the moment for me that I heard it that I needed to make a change and you you kind of said about the body you mentioned the body in there 
but can you explain a little bit more how or what made you leap? Yeah, I, I can remember the exact moment. So it's easy to share because, yeah, the body side, like I said, I'd really gone through this physical transformation. So that boosted my confidence. I had more energy on the mind side of things. It was getting clearer and clearer because I was literally feeling so unmotivated at work. I wasn't excited to be there. I was kind of checked out. Like I was literally spending my light, my lunch times going on shopping sprees or messaging my boyfriend at the time and starting to dabble with online business. I had completely mentally started to move on from it. And the big catalyst moment for me, and for context, I was a human resources manager at a manufacturing plant of about 300 some people. And every employee would receive $20 cash in an envelope with a birthday card from management on their birthday. And it was my job to page them to my office and give them their card. And after about three and a half years in this job, I had had to fire hundreds of people from other branches, other locations and stuff as well. I was kind of overseeing lots of other locations. And There was lots of layoffs and things going on. And so I got to the point where I was firing or laying off boardrooms of men at a time, which really Mm -hmm. felt soul sucking. It just felt awful. And one day I paged an employee up to my office to give him his birthday card with his $20. And it took him over 30 minutes to get to my office because he went around and hugged every single employee out on the manufacturing floor and finally got to my office and said, okay, Miss Jenna, I'm ready. And I handed him his card and he fell to his knees and started sobbing. And he's like, I'm not fired today. I'm like, no, happy birthday. And it it just was such a gut-wrenching heart moment in my heart that I realized in that moment, I just did not want to do that anymore. And it wasn't worth the Mm -hmm. money or the sense of stability it gave me. And I I literally put in my two weeks notice the next day, um, even without having a plan or really much of a business at that point. But I just had to make the big courageous move at that point. I love that. I love when uh, people and especially women are so courageous to just leap and know that that's not how they want to live, even though they don't have a plan and just trust, right? There is that trust piece that comes in. I, I feel my my journey was similar, but um, you put your two weeks, you didn't have a plan and you started, when did you start your business in the process? Yeah, I had started dabbling at that point. It was really not my business that it is today, but I was doing um, a little bit of network marketing, which I feel like is a gateway drug for many of us. So I was learning about the online space and kind of seeing the potentiality of entrepreneurship And around this time of quitting my job, I went and got my personal training certification, studied holistic um, nutrition and coaching. And so I was really doing basically holistic coaching for women. So personal training, um, energy work, healing kind of sessions, spiritual life coaching, and personal training at a gym. And so I did that for a year. And it was kind of my bridge where I had some of my own clients. I had some through the gym. And it was a really great leap pad or a bridge for me to kind of get my bearings and it basically moved from there really because of the holistic side because so many women would come to me you know often for the physical of wanting to get more in shape and then I started to see this mind body soul connection in real time action where it didn't matter how much hit cardio somebody was doing we had to look at their mindset we had to look at their vision we had to get deeper into things and that's where I got really passionate about coaching and working with women on the bigger picture and the deeper picture of things which ultimately led to the evolution into leadership and business because so many women by that point were asking me how did I quit my job and how did I follow my passions and how did I build an online business and how did I start to travel full-time and all of the things that came next so it was this natural evolution that really happened from there. Oh, I love it. I love it when (laughs) you're so open to like the process and then it evolves and then you kind of step into your purpose, right? Or what it is right now, at least we're always evolving, but I love the evolution. Um, So in regards to integrating mind, body and spirit in business leadership, how would you... What would you tell the audience on on how to do that for anybody who wants to be more a holistic CEO and or leader? 
Absolutely. Well, I feel like fundamentally first, it's about understanding what it means to live holistically, whether we're applying it to our own life and our health, if it's to our business, if it's in a leadership position in corporate. Holistic to me is like we've been talking about, it's the mind, the body and the soul connection. So essentially, it's about how we feel about things in our body, but also in our emotions and the connection that we feel to that spark, you know, of something that's bigger than that that's bigger than us, that gives us life, that gets us feeling excited and having a vision as well. And so two of the biggest things I can share is number one, one of my favorite mottos or mantras, whatever you want to call it, is to hold the vision, not the circumstance. And I feel like this is so applicable in all areas of life and business where first off, that requires us to hold a vision, to actually have direction of where we want to go and what we want to create next, whether that's a promotion for ourselves, or if it's revenue growth in our business, or if it's a personal health goal, to actually have a vision of what we're creating next and where we want to go, and then get really relentless in staying connected to that vision, whether that's looking at it daily, writing it down, meditating on it, but really being connected to it, even when life throws us curveballs as we move through the process of creating it. So I'd say that's a big one. And the other biggest one, and this is something I realized when I was working with women more as a holistic life coach and personal trainer, is most of us as humans, we focus on two steps. We focus on action and results. Like what action can I take in order to get the result that I desire? And it can work to a point, but oftentimes has us in this perpetual loop of surface level results or short term thinking and we don't necessarily move on the bigger trajectory of where we want to be in our life and so if we realize that there's three steps that really come before even taking action everything can change for us and those three steps are realizing that our influences create our thoughts which create our feelings which drastically changes the type of action we take and therefore the type of results that we have I love that. I think this is so good, such a gem to share with the audience in terms of becoming more self-aware of the the emotions that drive the the action, right? Um, for, For people, yeah, for people that are listening to be like, okay, you have to have the vision. You then have to take action. But before you do, you have to become more self-aware of what's happening so that you don't react. Seems like you're saying, let's not react, but let's respond. And you have to have that um, self-awareness or cultivate that. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. And, you know, it doesn't matter if somebody is spiritual or a business owner or where somebody's at on their journey. We can all practice emotional awareness of how are we feeling and how does that actually dictate the type of actions that we're taking because if somebody is feeling really disempowered or not connected to their vision the type of action they're going to take is probably not going to be the same as somebody who's feeling really clear about where it is they want to go and what they want to create and what they want to experience and it also helps us to be I think a lot more resilient when we ultimately experience road bumps along the way, because I mean, that's just life. (laughs) Especially, yes, that's (laughs) life. And especially if you are a CEO or somewhat type of a, of a manager and, or a business owner, I mean, there's, there's, there's going to be adversities. That's, that's the road that you're taking, but um, how can you move past that? How can you build that resilience? I love that. So what practical, I would say, like what practical steps or strategies would you give to your audience, like from one to three that they could apply right now to become more holistic? Mm, Yeah, I, I absolutely love this question. And what I would suggest is anyone listening to this is pick an area that you feel like you want to experience a change or have growth or create something new, whether it's a business goal, a work goal, a health goal, whatever whatever it is that is really on your heart that you want to step into, that you want to experience next. And first off, get clear 
on what that actually is. And it doesn't necessarily mean you need to have total clarity on how it's going to happen or when it's going to happen, but have clarity on what you actually desire because most of us don't even ask for what we want. We don't even really truly think about it and let ourselves dream bigger. And once you have that, whatever it is, then you can apply what I call the vision beyond the vision. Because most of the time, when we even get clear on what it is we desire, it's it's sometimes feels so big and audacious that we don't necessarily really go for it. And when we do the vision beyond the vision, it makes it so much more palatable. It makes it so much easier. And it also usually reveals action steps that we can take in a practical sense as well. So the vision beyond the vision is you start off with the clear thing that you want. Let's say you would like to double your business or you'd like to lose 10 pounds or you'd like to get a promotion, whatever, whatever the thing is. Then you can, and you can do this by writing it out, you can do it by closing your eyes and thinking about it, there's no right or wrong way, but essentially what you want to do is pretend for a minute that that's now just happened, like you've just got the promotion. I want you to think about, okay, now what? What's next? You have that promotion. Now what are you going after in life? What are you excited about? What's your next goal? And when we do this, which is the vision beyond our vision of like, what's next? If that's already our reality, number one, it helps us to expand our vision and think even bigger for ourselves. And number two, it makes whatever the next step is of that initial idea or goal that we have, it makes it more palatable. It makes it more of a milestone. Like, oh yeah, well, of course, if I want to 10x my business this year, well, of course, I'm going to double it. That's just a natural step on the way to the bigger thing. Or yeah, of course, I'm going to be able to lose 10 pounds if my goal is to do a body comp 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 test in the next year. Um, So whatever it is, it gets us thinking bigger and we go, oh yeah, that's totally, totally easy. It's totally natural. It literally helps us to regulate to it and to think about it on a holistic perspective of who do I need to become? How did I feel about that? What am I actually physically doing and taking action towards? And that can help us move towards our dreams, our goals, our desires so much faster and so much more effectively as well that everything can change in usually a pretty short amount of time as well. Ooh, I love that. So pretty much like what you're you're expressing, what my understanding is bringing that more into the reality. So I, as you were talking, I had this like vision of the vision beyond the vision and also my clairvoyancy vision. It's like kind of bringing that when you said into paper, um, you're bringing that more into reality so that you're closer to it. So if you want to lose 10 pounds, if you want to get that promotion, right? So you're kind of embodying that frequency a little bit more um, exactly. by processing through through it and understanding that that's totally possible, right? Mm-hmm, totally. Awesome. I love this. Is this being so insightful so far? Um, and you mentioned before, which I wanted to give this more to the audience. It's like embodiment of this frequency because you said it. And there is a lot of energy in when you say purpose. And I don't think a lot of people are in tune with their purpose. Like they trade money for time because mm-hmm. that's what they're supposed to do. So if you want to either leap or build a soul aligned business or whatever that is, become more holistic, right? There is a whole process of self-awareness, but how would you describe the purpose and how would you say, like, what's the first step in, in finding your purpose? Yeah, I love this. I, I think in the simplest term around purpose, the way I think of it is, what would you be doing if money were literally not a part of the equation? Like if money wasn't required, Mm. what would you be doing that really lights you up? And a lot of us already know what that thing is. But if you don't know what that thing is, then that's a really good thing to start with. And our purpose is usually very much in congruence, very much connected to the things that we're passionate about. So it may be things that 
our hobbies, not necessarily, you know, for me, things like business, it was not a hobby, <laughs> but it's definitely the kind of thing that as I kept following the breadcrumbs and I kept spending more time with women on their business, I realized it's my genius zone. It's, it's the kind of thing that I'm really, really good at and I love to do it. And this can be a really great way for everybody to think of it as well. This comes from the Big Leap book by Gay Hendrix. It's a great read for anyone who hasn't read it. And the concept that's in there that he breaks down in more detail is we have our genius zone, our excellent zone, our competent mm -hmm. zone, and our incompetent zone. And so a lot of us, especially in our jobs and careers, even in our own businesses, a lot of us spend a lot of time in the competent zone. Like we're okay at it, but we don't really love it. Or even the dangerous kind of excellent zone where we're really good at it and we don't mind it like we're pretty we're pretty okay with it it's comfortable but where we bump up in is the genius zone where we're really good at it and it really fills us up and you feel not just neutral after doing whatever it is you feel like you've actually expanded and really built your energy and you're excited about it like you get up and you're not just looking at your list like oh yeah okay that's cool I'm doing xyz today but you're actually frothing to do it like you're excited to do it if mm -hmm. somebody asked you to talk about it all day like you could talk about it all day like that that kind of energy is to me a really good way to see you know what our purpose is and also it's really great sometimes to have it mirrored back to us by others so even if you're feeling unclear of like what's my purpose ask some of the people closest to you and ask them like when do you think I'm most on purpose not because you have to take that on as truth but sometimes it's helpful to get feedback from others and we don't even see it for ourselves because we're so close to it so sometimes that can illuminate a lot as well Ooh, yeah, I love it. So I tell people all the time, and that's what you're saying is if you find something that, you know, you're so passionate, like you're saying, but in a way that even though you want to throw it out of the window, you still wake up excited, then keep it like that's, yeah. that's my life. It's like, I I'm not going to deny it. There are times there has been times where I've been so frustrated. But the difference is, one, you don't give up because you, it's kind of like you can't even walk away from it. Like I mm -hmm. know there is a pull to it that even though sometimes I'm really frustrated, I still wake up excited the next day. I still wake up and be like, there's still hope. Like it's going to yeah. work because I, I just feel it in my vein, right? It's kind of mm -hmm. that alignment. And that's what literally you were saying is that passionate. And sometimes we can't see it. So people may need more guidance from the outside in because they just can't see it. And, um, and that's okay. It means that maybe it's, it's too close to you. Yeah, I think that's the big thing. Oftentimes, we're too close to our own thing, whether it's our business or our purpose, our vision. Sometimes we get so close to our own thing, we can't see our blind spots or our gaps, or we just can't see beyond it sometimes. And that's where either having a mentor or getting some mm -hmm. feedback from people in your life or even just taking a step back to, you know, reflect and not force it um, can be huge, whether that's an hour, a day, a week, but just give yourself a little space to see what comes in. Sometimes we're living such full lives, which in many ways can be great, but also it can be a bit of a hindrance because if we're just going and going and going, even though we know we're not on purpose, it sometimes leads us to not actually take the time to just think about things. So even just taking an afternoon off where you don't have to do anything or be anywhere, or maybe you're in nature can really clarify a lot. I'm sure a lot of people listening to this it will find resonance in reflecting, thinking, oh yeah, well, a lot of the time when I'm in the car by myself or I'm in the shower or I'm laying in bed at night or I'm in nature, things feel mm -hmm. clearer or ideas come through. And so sometimes we just need to create that intentional space so that we can get clearer. Ooh, yes. Yeah, it's creating the intentional space to get, to receive more clarity. Love it. Um, so in order to summarize this for the audience, we've talked about different things, but I think the main thread here is the holistic CEO, right? And we've talked about alignment. We've talked about strategies. Um, we've talked about self-awareness, but if someone 
like to bring it down to the core and summarize it for them, like what would you say a holistic business owner, CEO, manager, you know, whoever, you know, they have an important role. Like what would it be? Like how can they identify themselves to become more of that holistic practitioner or CEO? Yeah, well, I think first thing, the fact that they're here, the fact that you all who are listening to this are here is a good clue and a good sign that you want to approach things in your life, your leadership, your business from a more holistic place, which means feeling more on purpose with how you spend your time, how you earn your money, how you give back to the world. And from there, thinking about what is your vision And where do you really want to go from here? Like if nobody told you how it should be done or what you can do, how would you do it? What would you create next? And let that be your muse. Let that be your beacon of light, your direction of where you should go after listening to this episode. Mm, Such a good question to bring the episode down to a closure because I want for them to listen to this and just start meditating upon the next step. I love everything. Anything else uh, that you'd like to share and also where people can find you? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Sarah, for having me here and everyone who tuned in with us. It's been so great. Such a blessing to be with you all. And where I hang out the most online is I would say mostly Instagram, which you can find me on there um, with my business name, Soul Meets Strategy, which is also my website, soulmeetsstrategy.com, which has my Facebook and my LinkedIn and all the other places that I hang out online, as well as my podcast as well, which um, those of you listening, you can come over and check out the Soul Meets Strategy podcast and tune into the episode that is dropping soon with Sarah on there as well. Mm-hmm.